In this video, we're going to be talking about units and dimensions. So as I've already mentioned, units are very important to thermodynamics and really most classes that you take. Remember, I said that if we do too much, we can end up overshooting the moon if we're an astronaut. And you don't want to go past the moon if the moon is what you're trying to aim for, you know? So units are quite important. Now, in thermal, we're going to generally be using two different types of units, right? The U.S. customary and the SI uh, units, right? So that's... Uh, U.S. customary and SI, which stands for system. I think the apostrophe actually goes that way, or the accent. International. And it's actually DUNIT. Right? So the international system of units, right? It's actually a French. Uh, term, right? But that's basically where most places other than the United States of America use, right? The United States of America uses U.S. customary units, right? Now, what's the difference, right? First of all, let's talk about what a unit is. So a unit is any quantity, a a any, hmm, how do I want to say it? Any quantity characterized by a dimension, right? So if I'm talking about myself, I might say I'm five foot eight, right? Or I might say I'm one point, I, whatever, seven, whatever meters tall, right? It depends on maybe where I am, who I'm talking to, that I'm going to use certain terminology to be able to understand what unit I'm talking about, right? Now, what units do we have? I'm going to make a little table here, right? And I'm going to say, I'm just going to write dimension. And we're going to look at how these things compare between the two uh, systems. So, obviously, I have U.S. customary. No, let's let's do SI first. SI is what we're, we're, we're going to be using most of the time. U.S. customary, it's there, but I think SI makes a lot more. It's a lot more intuitive, right? U.S. customary. Now, dimension, um, we're going to say L. We'll talk about M. We'll talk about T. Talk about another T, which is obviously capital T. Um, what else can I talk about? Force. Yeah, that's a good one. And these are just a few of the ones that we're going to be seeing throughout this course, right? So what you're going to find is that you're going to want to be very picky. You're going to want to be very meticulous, I should say, about your units. Because when you mess up your units, I'm telling you, like it's going to be a lot harder to solve the problem, right? A lot of the ways that I check myself, right, with my are with my units to make sure mm, this feels a little bit off. Where did I go wrong? Maybe my units were wrong, right? So in the SI system, right, my length is going to be given by meters, right? And do I want to write out the whole thing? Oh, yes, I'll write out the whole thing. So meters, depending on where you are in the world, you might spell it R-E. I'm American, so we, so we say E-R. But it's given by meters, right? Mass. The reason I use the capital M, it's, 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 um, actually, let me use a lowercase m. I shouldn't have done that. That's how you quantify mass, right? That's how you re represent mass, rather. So this is mass, right? And actually, you know what? I'm, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Actually, what I'm just going to do is this. Mass is given by what? Kilograms. Right? That's the SI unit for mass, right? So I would say I weigh this many kilograms. Well, that's mass. My mass is this many kilograms, actually. Right? Time is given in seconds. Um, temperature. Hmm. What do you think temperature is given in? If you said Celsius, you're not correct, right? We do use uh, Celsius within, within the SI system, right? But the official SI unit is actually Kelvin. Yes. Force is given by what? Force is given by Newtons. Isaac Newton was a brilliant man, so we, we named a unit after him. So these, this is how we denote these, right? And that's a capital K. Let me make that let me make that very apparent. That's a capital K. Newtons are given by N. US customary. Length, what do we use? Feet. And let me just double check myself. It is feet. 
Um, so we use something called pounds here, but I'm going to talk a little bit about why we use pounds. Um, we also use seconds here. Um, what do you think the temperature system is going to be? Now, if you said Fahrenheit, again, you're not correct. We have this thing called Rankine, right? And the reason we have these, these are like absolute temperatures. So these might be a little bit more practical for describing a system. Because what you're going to find, right, with zero Kelvin, that's basically saying that we have no molecular motion at that point, right? We've never gotten to zero Kelvin, but we do something called extrapolation. I'm not even going to break that down. But basically, they've, they've seen that, you know, there's this much molecule, molecular movement at this temperature. There's this much molecular movement at this temperature. There's this much molecular movement at this temperature. If I were to draw a line, right, we haven't physically been able to achieve that, right? I think we've gotten close, right? But if I extrapolated this line and I, and I graphed it, zero Kelvin would be where my zero uh, movement of the molecules are. So that's how they understand zero Kelvin to be, right? Now that's given by negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, right? Um, force is pounds again. And this is denoted, so I'll work down up this time. So pounds is given by LB, but the difference here, you might just see a little F there, right? That's pounds force. They might just say pounds, it depends. You'll, once you do enough problems, you'll, it'll, it'll start to make sense, right? Rankine is given by R, seconds still by S. This is going to be pounds, but it's a little m for mass. Feet is going to be ft, right? So this is how we define units. And these aren't all of the units, right? We have different units, velocity, different things, right? But these are how you have to get used to these units to be able to understand. You cannot mix and match, right? Because then we start getting irregular values and things like that, right? Now let's talk about one of the, one of the, one of the properties. Let's talk about pressure. And this is another, what do you think pressure is? Intensive or extensive? It's intensive because it's independent of the system, right? If I, if, I, if I have my system that doesn't automatically change the pressure, and I'm not talking about compressing my system, right? That would change the pressure. But having just, just drawing a barrier in between my room, that would not change my pressure, right? So pressure can be denoted by P, and this is given by F over A. Now, if I wanted to find out the units of pressure, what would I do? I would go ahead and say F is represented by what? Newtons, right? So I'll say it's N over area. Hmm, what is the formula for area? Length times length, right? Length is given by meters. So if I have meters times meters, that would give me N over M squared, right? However, we shorten this to call it a Pascal. So, newtons per meter squared is the unit for pressure, but we call that a Pascal, right? What else can we talk about? Work. Work is given by, work is represented as, um, work is, is given by W, right? Yes. Work is given by force times distance. And hmm, how would I how would I denote that? So force is given by what? And I like y'all to see me reasoning through things, right? So 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 it's not like I'm just some perfect student, right? To be very honest, right? I haven't touched thermo for probably the past two years, right? And I, I decided, hey, let me make a, a course on this, right? But I haven't touched thermo for quite a while, right? So I'll quickly watch a video and I'll say, okay, I sort of remember this. But I'm reasoning my way through a lot of this. So I want you to sort of try to mimic what I do. And you might even be better at it than I am, right? So force is given by what? Newtons. Distance is given by meters. So I can represent work with a newton meter, right? You can either put a dot there or you, you don't have to. Putting a dot there might make it a little bit easier to understand. But a newton meter is also called what? A joule. So, work can be represented by a joule. And what you're going to find is that Pascal, Joule, Newton, these, these are scientists that made breaking, not breaking discoveries, but they made advancements, right, within certain fields. So that's why we denote certain things with them, right? Um, what else I want to power, right? So power is actually sort of related to work, right? So power is given by work 
over time, right? So power is a unit per time, right? And I've already, excuse me, I've already said the power is equal to a Newton meter, right? And time is given by seconds, right? So power is a Newton meter per second or, oh, I'm so sorry. It's not a joule necessarily, right? Power, well, yes, it is. It is a joule, actually. Yes, it is a joule. I'm sorry. Work is given by joules, but here's where I, here's where I sort of tricked myself up on. I was going to say watts, right? Because I remembered the W and I started matching it up with work, right? But no, watts is power, right? You can try to remember that by if you have a speaker system in your car. Oftentimes, they'll give you the wattage of the speaker system, right? So watts are what we use to define power, right? So a watt is a joule per second. So Joe, and I, I'm sorry, I should actually give you how we represent that, right? So a Pascal is given by PA, right? That's a Pascal. A Joe is represented by J, right? So if I take J over S, that's a Joule per second. That's my unit of power. But we call this a Watt, and that's given by W, right? So that's denoted as a Watt, right? So PA means Pascal. J means joule, W means watt, and you're going to see different things like this, right? Um, what else? Newton, did I say Newton per second squared? Yeah. So I think we're going to go ahead and stop here. But I just want to say this, you know, units might seem very trivial at the time that you're doing them. However, what, the, what they used to do, um, uh, my teacher used to say, okay, well, every time you miss a unit, that's minus one point. Minus one, minus one, minus one. That's how important units are. Because if you do not have your units properly, uh, proper, you can mess up the whole problem, genuinely. So I want us to get in the habit of writing out units, right? When we're finalizing our answer, and you're going to see as, as I do example problems, I'm going to do this with you, right? So it's very important. We don't want to overshoot the moon. So I want to go ahead and stop here. And please, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. But thank you for sticking around.